Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. How you doing? I hope you're doing really, really well. So today, apparently I think I'm a booktuber and I'm gonna show you everything I read in January. So I'm filming this on February 1st so I can crack on with my new reading tonight. I have a book that I've um, been looking at, picking up. This was this is next in the sequence. I watch a lot of booktube. I absolutely fucking love booktube. It's like my favorite place to be on the internet, book talk, booktube, love it. So I started to decide to film maybe a bit more book content because it's the content I love to watch. So that's kind of my plan for the year is to come back to the channel, not neglect it as much because I did really neglect it I think last year and try and film things that I'd want to watch. Just be a bit more present but not be so like anal about the things that go up and just put out my life online and just crack on with it because I love watching stuff like that so I thought I'd create stuff like that <laughs> um but basically I read a total of six books and I've got a lot to get through and I'm going to do it in kind of chronological order so you know what I read when and I also have a Goodreads account I will leave it linked down below but I will tell you kind of what I gave them star wise yeah i really hope you enjoy this let me know what you've read in january and if you have any book recommendations and i think that's everything i think i'm just gonna get started and show you what i read in january so the first book that i actually read this year so 2022 feels so fucking weird to say that it feels like we were in like 2019 like last week the first book that i actually read was the magpie society by Zoe Sugg and Amy McCullough. This is the second, this is Two for Joy, and the first one was called One for Sorrow. So, basically, give you a little overview, right? This is a book about two girls, one called Audrey, who has moved over from the US of A, and another girl called Ivy, who is in England, and she goes to basically, well they both do now, like an old English boarding school, and it's kind of, it just gives me very like, not gothic i don't want to say gothic but almost gothic vibes the girls kind of become friends because they have to they're shoved in the same room together to live in and they have to become friends so they do and they uncover like quite a lot of mysteries surrounding the school there is something called the magpie society which they found out about one of ivy's close friends actually died and they decided to uncover kind of who did it in the first book now you never really figure out who did it. You have your speculations and you have speculations all throughout the book and it changes all the time, which is amazing. But in this book, basically, it's a, it's a follow on from the last, from the first book. The first book was so good, like it left it on such a cliffhanger that I was really excited to read this. So when this came out, I asked for it for Christmas and John got it me, so thanks John. And I literally devoured this within a couple of days, I think. Literally, the ending blew me away so this is like a continuum of the last book of still figuring out who murdered a girl called lola but also like things surrounding the magpie society that keep popping up people and situations and things like that so that's it's 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 just so good like i hope there is a third but i don't think there is going to be because it was kind of like a resounding ending we found out who did it but I just this was five stars instantly five stars this is a book that I kept thinking about like in the day like I usually read mostly at night but even in the day I was like picking this up because I wanted to get a couple of chapters in and then read like another 10 chapters at night like honestly I loved this book this was five star read rated it five star on goodreads and I just I know Zoe did like a girl online kind of series and it was romance based I believe and it just wasn't really wasn't really my vibe so I didn't pick it up but when I found out she was writing like a mystery thriller YA kind of vibe I was like absolutely getting my bag um because I've watched Zoe for years I have and I just I wanted to try it I wanted to see what it was like and I fucking loved it moving on to the second book that I read this month this is quite a heavy bastard it's a big one could kill someone with it even pardon the pun but this is the seven ages of death by dr richard shepherd he is a g i absolutely adore this man i've read his books i follow him on instagram on both my instagrams i have a book instagram as well and he reposted a picture from my book instagram on his instagram and i just felt really famous i'm not gonna lie like i felt like yes made it i've made it if you don't know dr richard shepherd is a forensic pathologist and if you don't know what that is basically he is the man that gets 
down and not literally down and dirty in that sense but like literally like dirty with dead bodies so wrote a natural causes as well but this is this is kind of like a progression of stories it's, it's hard to explain it is a progression of little stories and um cases that he has covered throughout his time and also like his ideas on certain cases that maybe he didn't necessarily have a hand in but has seen them in the media and things like that you just get a lot more of him if that makes sense first book it was very very case heavy which i did like i love case heavy books but this was a bit more about him a bit more about his life about it like a friend of his that had died and things like that so it was a lot more kind of personal it was a lot more personal yeah i just love him and i feel like my friends a couple of my friends will also know how this feels like uh emma a life and death but she will know the love for this man because i think she feels it too but his book was just incredible i devoured it i loved it my favorite part of this book was he actually talked about a case that i think people a lot of people would be afraid to talk about if that makes sense but it was the a spy in a bag case now if you've never heard of that case it's quite heavy it was actually about a man that lived in my hometown weird and he moved to london to do his kind of job which was like mi6 cia kind of vibe and he then was found dead in his apartment in the bath in a bag like put into like a hole door and the ac was cranked up really high as well now there's a lot of speculation as to how he died did he die because he wanted to leave mi6 blah 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 this kind of yeah so he kind of talks about his theories on it which I can kind of see. I kind of agree with his theories more than the conspiracy theories, but I do like a conspiracy theory. So, this book. Uh, I gave this a four out of five stars. The only thing I knocked off kind of a star for was because I find sometimes it can get a little bit, not repetitive, but I think that I'm not as interested in more of the mundane everyday cases, like, you know, the old lady that died of a stroke or... Like I like the nitty gritty, like the spy in a bag. So I think that was the only reason I knocked a star off, purely for personal taste, not because of how the book is written at all. It is a great book, a great book. Yeah, now I'll talk to you about this. This book I read and I had to stop at the end. Like I didn't pick up another book because my head was mashed. And when I say mashed, I mean mashed. Like if you want a book, that literally makes you feel like you've lost the plot and when i say that i mean that like i literally thought to myself oh my god why is my brain like 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 this it needs to go back to normal now actually scared me and it's you let me in by camilla bruce now this is a very fucking odd book so odd that actually i've seen a lot of people have kind of either dnf'd it or they've given it two stars because they've only got halfway through and just thought can't bothered anymore don't get it persevere with it persevere with it because it literally boggled my little brain i have never felt so weird after reading a book than i have reading this book it's almost like there are two alternative mindsets in this book two lives two mindsets one is kind of like a fairy fey magic mindset but the other is the reality which keeps you kind of guessing along the same time so i'm not going to say too much about this i guess let me just read it to you and you'll understand it so it says everyone knew best-selling novelist cassandra tip had twice got away with murder even her family were convinced of her guilt so when she disappears leaving only a long letter behind they suspect that her conscience finally killed her but the letter is not what anyone expected it tells two chilling darkly disturbing stories one is a story of children lost in the woods of husbands made from twigs and leaves feathers and bones the other is the story of a little girl who was cruelly treated and grew crooked in the shadows. But which story is true? Fucked my head. I'm sorry. Can't explain it. I think I actually gave this like a five star. Let me check. It really fucked with my head. It was like, if you like the books that make you feel like you're actually losing the plot, this is your book. This is it. Yeah, I gave this a four stars because of the fact that I couldn't pick up another book for a couple of days because my head was mashed. It's clever. It is so, so clever. Now, I'm going to not spoiler alert at all because it is actually, though, whatever I, whatever I say about it, talking about the book is spoilery. 
but I'm just gonna say there are themes of sexual natures in this book and themes of murder so I'm gonna leave it as that you can kind of tell that from the back of the book anyway I'd love to talk more about this book so if anybody has read this please slide into my DMs because I want to talk about this but obviously I know there are people out there that might want to read it so I'm not gonna talk too much about it I just don't know what to do with it like I wanted to throw it at a wall but not in like a way that was like this is shit like this this I've never felt so messed up in my head and I have mental health issues so I feel messed up most of the time this fucked with my head but it was incredible if you want to read it I think you should but just go into it knowing like this could mess with my my brain so I have three books left um I think I'm gonna pull out the one that I've been reading alongside all of these so basically I set myself a goal of reading three self-help books I fucking hate self-help books I hate them with a passion a lot of them I find quite tedious and patronising, boring. I don't like it. <laughs> I like murders and scary things. I don't like self-help books. I get bored. But I set myself a task of reading three and uh, I've done I've done one. I've done one and it's only January so that's fine. I have got to read another one for a couple of months. But this is actually, and I'm going to take it back when I say I thought self-help books were shit. This is actually... An incredible book and it helped me and has helped me so much but this is not a book that is I guess I can say is ever finished because this is a book that I will always come back to to look through to get kind of a bit more perspective if I'm struggling etc but this is everyday mindfulness for OCD tips and tricks and skills for living joyfully and this is by John Hirschfield, MFT, and Shalla Nicely, LPC. Don't know what those letters at the end mean. I tabbed it as well with little helpful things, and I've like underlined it and things. Like, this is kind of, I've kind of made this a book for me. I've learned a lot from this, and I always thought mindfulness was a load of shit, not gonna lie to you. I did, and to be honest, it's, it's kind of changed a lot for me in my head. It's helped me rationalise my OCD a lot better. And it's helped me kind of put two and two together in my head instead of feeling like I'm being swamped by like horrific thoughts and feelings, if that makes sense. It talks about ERP. Now, I've read it, but I've not done any ERP yet because I am still getting my head around like the meditation side of it and the self-compassion. So that's the first kind of half of this book. And I've read the whole book. Obviously, I finished it. But putting now into practice I'm doing the mindfulness and then once I've kind of got the mindfulness bit down and the you know looking after yourself bit then I'm going to start with the ERP which is kind of like meditating on steroids but you meditate on a trigger which is hard to do like don't get me wrong like I feel like it's going to be really really difficult but so that's why I'm trying to kind of master the first bit of mindfulness so then I can crack on to the ERP and see if that helps a little bit more as well. So this book, I think if you do have OCD, is something that you should definitely have a little look at and kind of maybe read a little bit of. You don't necessarily have to read the whole book, but I, I would advise it because there's a lot of helpful little bits in there uh, that can kind of counteract certain thoughts and feelings, which is always good for somebody with OCD that kind of needs that reassurance. Last two books. This book I read half and half audiobook half actually reading the book because when i started to realize it was podcast style like this this book is told podcast style when i realized that i thought like the audiobook might actually be a lot better because it would give me a bit more narration if that makes sense so it is sadie by courtney summers now a girl who kind of had a bit of like a traumatic upbringing like her mum was never really there she was a drug addict etc her mum had like a series of boyfriends that Sadie necessarily didn't really like um, but there was one kind of constant in her life which was Maybeth who is a woman that lived near them and kind of just looked after Sadie and when her little sister Matty came along she became like Sadie's everything and Sadie kind of treated her like a child Ooh, oh I thought I was about to burn the book so when Matty is murdered Sadie like sets herself the goal of going to find who did it and she follows loads of different leads loads of different paths and you kind of follow her through that but you find out who murdered Matty but you never really find out an ending and that's 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 something that I struggle with because I'm like, well, what happened then? 
tell me the ending. Like, I don't know if Courtney Summers has left it open for a second one, maybe, because there are definitely some unanswered questions in this. But I do think it was a great book. Uh, even better audiobook because it was kind of like you were listening to an actual podcast. It wasn't exactly for me, um, but I think I gave it like a 4, 3.5. Didn't hate it, didn't... Yeah, I gave it a 4 on Goodreads but rounded down to a 3.5. Because I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it, if that makes sense. Like, this wasn't one that I was like, oh my god, I can't wait to pick that back up tonight. It was just like, oh, I'm just reading this book, if that makes sense. So, yeah. But I think if I had gotten, like, a proper ending, I would have felt a lot more satisfied with the book. But because there wasn't a proper ending, I feel like I was a bit more like, meh. Meh. But it was still a very good book. Um, so, basically, Sadie sets out to find out who killed her sister. Now the final book is actually a quick read. I didn't realise that at the time. I just read it, read the blurb on Amazon and bought it. But it's literally only like a hundred pages. Cost me a pound. I thought it was just on sale, but no. And it's called uh, The Donor by Claire McIntosh. So in this we have two women and a daughter. Now the one daughter is Meg and her mum is Lizzie. Now Lizzie and her and Meg have been through like a load of shit. Basically, Meg needs a heart transplant. Now Karen's the other woman, her son dies and gives Meg that heart. So then when the donor, so basically Karen, who is the little boy's mum who gave Meg the heart, wants to come and meet Meg and see Meg and get involved in Meg's life, Lizzie kind of feels like she has to let her, if that makes sense. Like she feels a bit guilty for her, but also she kind of had this like resounding feeling that this woman was not to be trusted. This is a really fucking good book. I wish it was longer and I rarely say that about books because I like a good quick read. This was fucking great. Like I gave this a five star because it was so fast paced and I love a fast paced book. Nothing worse than a long drawn out boring book. This was great. Literally sailed through it, read it in like two nights, like 50 pages each, fell asleep, start again. But it was cracking absolutely clacking um and i feel like this these kind of quick reads i've never seen before and i feel like i'm going to read a lot more of them because i like a quick book like i said but this just like smashed it out of the park didn't expect the ending either which i like i like not being able to like figure things out until the very end because i feel like it gives me more of like a fuck reaction so this i gave a five star because i thought that was fucking mint sorry my battery's about to die but basically that was a book that makes me feel like yes that was that was good i wish but i do wish it was longer if that makes sense which isn't something that i ever really feel but i do wish it was longer because i'd have liked a lot more context and i'd like to know what happens because that is left on a fucking good cliffhanger so yeah that is everything i read in january I, but that is the end of this video i really hope you enjoyed it i'm speaking really really quickly because i've got my little red light flashing at me because my battery's about to die